Rain, rain, go away. Come again another day. Uh, if only my powers were strong enough, I could control the weather and be happy. But now I'm all wet and sad. Hello folks and welcome to Dice Chatter. My name is Donnie and today I will show you how I made this ruined barn that you can use in your tabletop games. This is actually my first proper building I have ever created on the channel and I find it has turned out pretty good for a first timer. So without further ado, let's get to the whiteboard. With the wonderful help of my Proxon table, I will be milling up logs, cutting up stones, and making posts all out of XPS foam. I will say this project is doable without a Proxon, but it may take a minute or two to complete. Now I want the barn broken down and ruined, and also allow players to move miniatures through doorways, peek through windows, and of course, move through the scattered rubble. Alrighty then, on to the build. I wanted to start things off with making some tiny, tiny bricks. For those of you who want to follow the process step by step, I made some 10 by 5 by 5 millimeter bricks. Like I said, they are tiny. With the Proxon, it is easy enough to get a batch of these done very quickly. Once you complete this step, grab some stones from the backyard, get a container, drop your bricks and stones inside, and give it a good shake. This will add some nice subtle detail to the foam and really make the bricks seem that they were carved from stone. Once we zoom in here to my little fingies, it is a bit easier to see what this simple idea can do. Alrighty then, now on to the base. As per usual, I go with my peel and stick vinyl tile for the base. I just make sure to spread around some Mod Podge over the sticky side so I don't have to deal with my hands and other foam sticking to the base. At least not where I intend to place some foam, that is. Once that is dry, we snag up those bricks we just made and start laying them down. Now for the gluing process for the bricks, and now that I think about it, for the entire build, I use some tacky glue. I personally like this stuff because it takes a little bit of time to dry, but also gives me the opportunity to move some pieces around if need be. So yeah, we get some brick laying done. I only did two layers here. I want the bricks to add some difference to the build since the entire thing will pretty much be wood, and they will act as a nice foundation for the building. Being pretty new to the terrain game here, I find that variation, definition, and details really make your builds go from garbage to greatness. Laying down these bricks did not take too long at the end of the day, and it was a nice and relaxing step to start the build. Once we set all of these guys in place, we let the glue dry and we move over to some timbers. Now before we start placing the wood panels, we have to texture them. Now there are a handful of ways to do this. Use the wire brush, a pen or pencil, and so on, but to be honest, I am not a huge fan of those techniques due to how they look or the grooves in the wood look too consistent. So I went with my foam cutter here and used the tip to carve in wood grain details. Pressure is key here when trying out this method. Be delicate and take your time. If you want a wood plank to look beaten up and broken, well, just slam your foam cutter into the wood. Oh yeah, for those of you following along, the wood beams in the build that I place in each corner of the barn are 1cm by 1cm. I make sure to texture these guys up similar to all of my other planks and make sure to cut out a section to make space for these support pieces. I figured for this build we would have four main beams that would support the building. From this point, we have a barn skeleton made up and now we must start filling it in with some wooden panels. I milled up lots and lots of beams for this step. On a side note, always make more beams than you think you will need. I think I had to go back and carve out some more wood panels about three times. <laughs> Putting all this together is very simple though. I still stick with my tacky glue and just start plopping down one board at a time. I do make a conscious effort to place more interesting ones facing outward since the inside of the barn will be visible at the end of this project, but no one's gonna look inside and criticize all the parts that look unnatural. It is also just satisfying to watch all these boards being placed up during a nice little time lapse. To make sure that these wooden planks stay secure, I go around the build and find some other sections where big support beams should be placed. This will help the build process in a number of ways. This will give the building some more needed details, definition, and of course support so that now these wooden panels are attached at the base and with these side beams. 
After this, we move on over to the roof layout. I am still using the same size boards from the side panels and supports. On my cutting mat, I have lines that mark out 60 degree angles, so I essentially cut and angled these wooden panels and shaped them to fit the roof outline. Now I also took each finished angled piece and made a couple copies of it so that we could also make the roof support at the front of the barn and of course one in the center that will be doing a lot of the grunt work. You know, holding up the entire roof. Once we get this centerpiece on, the barn is really starting to take shape. I decided for the roof I wanted to break away from the wooden paneling and wanted to install some individual shingles. I obviously needed some way to place the shingles down, so I had some very thin EVA foam and cut it to size. I can't recall, but I think the EVA foam is maybe about 2 millimeters thick, and you definitely want something here that is very thin so it doesn't show up in the final project. Oh yeah, and I did forget to mention, I put a big support beam under the central support for the roof. It makes architectural sense, and it looks cool through the doorway. Now on to the fun and also annoying and maybe even a little bit cathartic step, laying down individual roof shingles. Now the Proxon made the cutting out shingle step extremely easy. I went as thin as I felt comfortable for each shingle and I made a handful of varying sizes since I felt some old fashioned barn building techniques didn't have much in the way of perfect size shingles. I continued with my tacky glue here so that I could move these foam pieces around if need be and I just layered down shingle after shingle. I feel like if I made some thin strips that would span the roof and then did some snipping with scissors to form the shingles, it would not get that nice misplaced and disheveled look I was going for. At the end of the day, this may have been the longest step, but it is usually the long steps that make your project look way better in the end. Oh yeah, and I didn't fill in some areas with shingles. There is a good reason for this, and I will get into that at a later step. Next, I wanted to add some more details and definition to the barn. I simply cut up some more of that same wood boards and made some corner supports, and I also began the process for the windows. I wanted them to be a little bit larger than what you would normally see for a 28mm scale window, so that fighters could see enemies hiding inside this dilapidated barn, and vice versa, of course. It was simple enough to draw an outline with a pen and cut the window out with a sharp blade. Once again, we will add some more boards around the window to draw your eye to the top-notch XPS foam craftsmanship, and we soon will have a cool-looking terrain piece for the tabletop. Oh, but now is the fun and uh, scary part. I have to destroy my precious creation. I do a once-over the entire build to see if I missed anything, and then I start carving out a section for me to tear off. Now, I didn't want to go absolutely insane on the destruction process here, but I wanted to do enough so that a 2 inch base figure could move through the main entrance of the barn and be able to sneak in through the damaged rear. Not going to lie, I was pretty happy with how that turned out. But you also have to add some of that damaged rubble where it had collapsed. I apologize for keeping my autofocus on here as my fat hands get in the way of a few shots. With that being said, take some of that torn up foam and throw it around where you feel like. Snap it more, break it down, and place it strategically so that a model is able to move through and stand atop the rubble. Also, we must not forget to texture the inside of the barn and give the floor a dirty and grungy feel. These Vallejo texture pastes I use do a great job giving it the muddy, earthy feel. And once it dries, I don't have to do anything else to make it look good. I really love that product. Once the glue and texture paste dry, we black bomb the entire piece with the good old fashioned black Mod Podge step. I feel like I don't have to go over this step since every damn person on the tube making terrain goes over this in all of their builds. So anywho, I prime everything black and we can get ready to start painting. So pretty much for 75% of the painting process, I use an airbrush. This is essentially to speed up the process and I have the basic tool, so I might as well use it. If you don't have an airbrush, you still can of course paint a badass dilapidated barn, but it may take a minute or two longer. Also, I will not be listing out the exact paints I use, but I will mention the basic colors and ideas I had while painting up the terrain piece. To start off, I did a very light gray, almost zenithal highlight over most of the build. Some spots I hammered more light gray and concentrated hard with the airbrush spray, while other sections I just did a very light dusting. 
This is an old and beaten down building. The rain and elements have warped boards and bled colors, and that is what we are going to try to replicate with all the colors we slap on the barn. The lower half of the barn I use a darker brown or a burnt umber, if you will, and keep that same idea of light dusting over some sections and blasting the paint in others. Also, don't forget to get some of the insides. And remember, you don't have to be that perfect for the internal sections of the build. Honestly, you really don't see that much of it at the end. For the roof, I went with a more orangey-brown mix. I didn't want the entire build to look so similar, and I imagine that these shingles were cut from a different cloth. Or, well, I guess in this case, a different species of tree. I continue this thought process of trying to keep things bright and glowy, and I even go back a little bit over some sections with a white ink to really make things pop and look a little bit over the top. This is because our next step, we are throwing a black wash over the entire build. So yeah, uh, black wash. I think you all know what you have to do here. Just don't let it pool heavily in spots. Well, there you go. On to highlighting everything in the build, the first highlight you see here on the roof may be a little hard to tell, but the intention is to bring those old colors back up, and it is always best to do it slowly. I just do some dry brushing with some cheap makeup brushes you can get at the dollar store, and I just keep building up brighter and brighter layers. And just to reiterate, this barn is beaten and broken down by the elements. Make it look messy, don't highlight some areas too much, and over highlight other locations. Just have some fun with it. For the main boards, I wanted to make it look more gray and rotted. I tried out painting some of the boards with a medium gray, and I only focused on the raised sections. I also didn't do this for every other board and every raised section. Sporadically place these highlights around, and after this, I lightly hit the boards with an off-white. And I mean lightly. Try not to overdo this part. Just take your time and make those grungy wooden boards pop. For the two small layers of bricks at the base of the barn, I did a very simple scheme. I went for the medium gray paint job, and then I hit it with a black wash. Simple enough. I also went around the build and wanted to add a bit more color and variation. I went with a sepia and a greenish brown wash. I decided to add some bleeding and smudge effects over the wood boards and a little bit to the roof. From the start of the painting process, I honestly didn't really know what I was going to do, but sometimes you just have to go with the flow and take a risk or two. And to be honest, I think it turned out great. I also wanted to add a couple more little details to the build. Since I will mainly be using this terrain in my Frostgrave games, I wanted to add some cold themed grass tufts to the barn floor, and I went around here and there and added in some snowy texture. I just made sure not to lay down too much snow that I couldn't use this barn in a different setting. With the extra little details complete, we have ourselves a cool looking ruined barn. So there you have it folks, my take on a dilapidated ruined barn. I hope you all enjoyed the build and I have plans of doing more creations in the future. I will also say coming from a first timer, uh, in terms of buildings, with a little help from a foam cutter and a proxon table, making buildings can be easy and be a blast. Since you have made it this far in the video, feel free to subscribe, check out the Patreon, and do all of the other socials. Until next time folks, I want to thank you all for watching, and of course, happy gaming.